Hello, hello everybody. Mr. Slope Guy here today to talk to you guys about transformations with our main focus today being on a specific type of transformation called a translation. So you can move pattern block blocks by sliding them, flipping them, or turning them. Each of these moves is a type of transformation. A transformation is a change of position or size of a figure. So if I take a triangle and I just slide it along, that is a type of transformation. Or if I take and flip a polygon over a line, that is a type of transformation. Or I take a polygon and I just turn it around a given point. That is a type of transformation. So we have slides, flips, and turns. And slides, flips, and turns actually have math names. So a math name for a flip, taking a piece and flipping it over, would be an example of a reflection. If I change the angle of a piece, if I just turn it, think of a puzzle piece, if I just turn and spin it around a given point, that's a rotation. And moving a piece across the table, just taking like a puzzle piece and sliding it across your desk, that would be a type of translation. So these are all under the big umbrella of transformations. We have reflections, which is like a flip. We have a rotation, which is a turn. And we have a translation, which is a slide. So translations, we're moving the point the same direction and the same distance. And the image and the original are both congruent, meaning Everything will stay the same size and shape. The size of the puzzle piece would not change. It stays congruent. Congruent meaning same in size and shape. So you can see examples of translations on things like wallpaper or fabric or wrapping paper where we have this repeated um, pattern. Like sometimes you'll see it with like a candy cane here and then it slides the candy cane over and you see another candy cane. Those would be examples of translations. All right, we have graph the point two, three, and reflect it over the x-axis, all right? So we just put it on our ordered pair at two, three, right, two, up three. And to reflect it over the x, I gotta find my x. Well, I have my x-axis here, I have my y here. So to reflect it over the x, I'm gonna start with being three above the x, and if I flip it over it, I'm gonna become three below the x, would be my new point. If I go back to my original point and I'm asked this time, graph the point two, three, all right, I have two, three right here, reflected over the y-axis. Well, if I'm reflecting over the y, I'm gonna go from being two to the right of the y, I'm gonna flip it over it, reflect it over the y, and I become two to the left of the y. So that's an example of reflection, reflecting over the x or reflecting over the y, which is the single point. Next, we have what's called prime notation. And prime notation is a shortcut way, it's a quick way to show what is the original and what is our copy or what is our image. So we have um, our original here and it has a little A above it. And then we have, I want you guys to go ahead and draw a little stick man on your notes, label him with a capital A and write the word original. And then I want you to draw another little stick guy that looks just like your first stick guy, make a copy or an image of the original, and I want you to label it with A and a little apostrophe, and that's red. Mathematically, we call that A prime. So A is the original, and A prime would be the copy. So the figure you get after transformation is called the image. To name the image of the point, we use prime notation. The figure below shows the translation of A to A prime. So all we did was took our stick man and we slid him over a little bit and we made our image of A prime. So prime notation, great way to know where you started and what is your change. So the original would be A and the image or copy would be A prime. So tell whether each transformation is a translation, rotation, or reflection. Well, first I need to figure out what was my beginning point. Well, my beginning point is labeled A, and then my new copy, my image, is A prime. So to go from A to A prime, 
It started one to the left of the y, it went one to the right. This point started three to the left, it is now three to the right of the y. So I think it was just reflected over the y. Good example of just being reflected. We can check each of the points from a to a prime and see what happened. This one starts with a, they all start with a and then a prime here. So this one, first I have to identify this is the original and this is after our transformation. And what we're looking for, is it a translation, a rotation or reflection? In this case, it just looks like they slid it. They slid it to the right and they slid it down from a to a prime. So a slide is facing the same way is a great example of a translation. How about this one? We started with A, we went to A prime. Well, it started like one above the X, one below, one above the X here, one below. And so it looks like a reflection, in this case, reflected over the X axis. This one from A to A prime looks like it has just been spun or turned around this specific point. We have an example of a rotation you can kind of see this horizontal line here is flipped from horizontal to vertical. This vertical line has now been flipped to horizontal. It's all been turned around that specific point, point of rotation. So what is a line of symmetry? A line of symmetry separates a figure into two congruent parts. It's just a line where we can cut our figure into two equal pieces. So if you took scissors and we cut it, they would fold, we would take the two pieces, put them on top of each other, they would cover each other exactly, or you can think of it as folding. Like if we took this pentagon here in the middle and we folded it over that dotted line, it would completely cover the other half. So this one has one line of symmetry, one place where we could cut it in half. This one, there's nowhere I could take my scissors or I could fold this for it to cover completely. A triangle, a bunch of different ways I could cut a triangle or fold a triangle for line of symmetry. I could cut it here, any of these three places, and would cover the other part. So this one has, a triangle has three lines of symmetry. And a circle, I could stand here all day and draw lines of symmetry over and over and over. As long as it went through the center, I could cut my circle in half over and over and over. So we say a circle has an infinite amount of lines of symmetry. So a line of symmetry is just looking at cutting it exactly in half. So it overlaps perfectly. All right, so translation problems. On a coordinate plane, draw triangle KRT, graph the image of KRT after each translation. So our first one, we're given KRT, four units to the left. Well, I'm just gonna take each of these points. I'm gonna take K, I'm gonna go four units to the left and draw K prime. I'm gonna take R, I'm gonna count four units to the left and make R prime. And I'm gonna take T, point T, move forward to the left and label it T prime. Then I can draw my new triangle. And my new triangle has just been translated four places to the left. It's still congruent. It's still the exact same size and shape. What if I have two moves, four units to the left and five down? I can take each of these points, count four left, down five, four left, down five, four left down five, and my new triangle is now K prime, R prime, T prime, has been translated four units to the left and five units down. What about writing a rule? Well, first I need to identify what's the original. In this case, I know I'm going from ABC, triangle ABC, the one without prime notation is the original, to A prime, B prime, C prime. then I just need to count how many places I'm moving. <coughs> so A, to get from A to A prime, I'd go three to the right and up two. That means I'm changing three on the X, that's the left or right, and up two on the Y. So my rule writing, looking at X and Y values, from A to A prime is three to the right and up two. Well, three to the right is three changing on the X, so these rules are written with x plus an amount and y plus or minus an amount. So if my x is going three to the right, that means I'm adding three to the x amount and I'm going up two on the y, so I'm adding two on the y. So my rule would be from a to a prime would be x would be adding three 
and y would be adding 2, and I can check that with all the points. So if I took the c to go to c prime, can I move 3 to the right and up 2? Yep, 3 to the right, up 2 works great. I could try b, this 3 to the right, up 2 to get to b prime. So this rule works of moving plus 3, right 3, and up 2 will get me from all the original points to all the points on prime notation after I have made my translation. All right, you guys pause the video here and write a rule for going from the original triangle, which the original is ABC, to A prime, B prime, C prime. Pause the video here, try it, and come on back. All right, welcome back. So to go from A to A prime, I am going down four and left four. So down uh, left four would be negative four on the X, and then down four would be negative four on the Y to A prime. And I could try that with each of these. I could go left four, down four, left four, down four. So X is minus four and Y is minus four. And pause and try this one. All right, so A would be going from A to A prime would be going one to the right. So X value would be adding one. Remember our X is our left and right, the X axis. And our Y is going down five. Remember Y is our up and down, and that's to go down five. So from A to A prime, I'm going right one, down five. From C to C prime, right one, down five. From B to B prime, right one, down five. All right, I hope that gets you guys going on Oh, I have one left. Going from A to A prime. Going left, one, two, three, four, five, and down, one, two. Left five and down two, that's gonna be minus five on the X, and down two is gonna be minus two on the Y. Long video today, hope that, guy, hope that helps you guys all get going on transformations, and particularly focusing not just on rotations and reflections, but on translations. Have a great day. O-U-T spelled out.